What is up, my good peoples? It is X here, and man, today we're going to start a new journey, y'all. We're going to start a new chapter. We're going to start a new series. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, this, this shit is going to be called Guided by the Sevens. It's a series that's basically going to be a collaboration of my thoughts, my experiences, and just many different spiritual scenarios that should paint a perspective that I think may help others in the world. I think the best way to start a series like this is to uh, tell a little bit about myself. As y'all know, my name is X, um, but my real name's Xavier, and the people closest to me would call me either Xavier or X or X-Man, you know, just usually those three. I'm a very chilled out person, and as far as I can remember, I've always been like this. Many would see me, though, at first impression as someone mysterious, maybe even borderline approachable. And I'm taking this from other people, you know, who um, told me this. And I believe that's because I give a vibe that's hard to put a finger on, and even still to this day. But I believe it, um, it attracts people. Or certain types of people, which brings us into our first deep conversation. Not too long ago, after the birth of my first child, I came across some information that threw me off big time. I ain't gonna lie. I came across what is called a natal chart. Now, before I go into this, I want to tell y'all that I was already on a journey of self-discovery long before I came across the ship. I knew about the Zodiac and the signs, I knew all about my son, which is, you know, being a cancer. When I looked into the Zodiac and what my sign is, it described me to a T, which is, man, that shit is insane alone, y'all. It's insane alone. After, a crumb, uh, excuse me, after coming across my natal chart, I understood that there are other parts that make up our entirety. Just focusing on the zodiac alone, there's three parts. There's something called a rising sign, which is known as your ascendant, which is what people would see you on as the outside, first impressions. There is also a descendant sign, which is your shadow side, or the soul behind your identity. This side I think I take on the most, which is kind of a little bit weird, but I'll get to that a little bit later. Um, just to elaborate a little bit more on the descendant, it's the subconscious side of yourself that you typically keep hidden and is the driving force behind your emotional reactions. And last but not least, there's also the position of the sun, which, you know, uh, comes up with one of the signs, one of the 12 signs. And as I explained earlier, I'm a cancer, I'm the crab. But my sun sign was on what they call the cusp, which basically means my sun was on its way into the next sign at the time of my birth, which is uh, very significant. And that kind of makes me, I don't know, I want to say it helps me or makes me take on the traits of both of the signs that I was going into, but it has a whole lot more into it. Finding this out gave me insight into who I already knew I was, but reading on it gave me even deeper insight into why I am the way I am, which just shook the hell out of me, to say the least. You know, most of us is taught that our life and the experiences of life make up who we are. But even though I believe that's partially true, in my case, it's hard to set that fact in stone because a few traits, two particular traits that I struggle with is uh, procrastination and stubbornness. And I'll get to that in a little bit, but there was always something inside of me guiding me, though. And it was expressive, man. It's hard to ignore it. And when I didn't listen, I learned damn near almost immediately why I should have listened. And this happened con consistently in my life until I came into religion. Now, like in my early parts of my youth, I was raised a Christian. And it wasn't like really too, like it wasn't pushed on me. You know, it's something my family went to church, not all the time on the weekend, but Sunday we'd usually go to the church and, you know, listen about Jesus and God and 
Panthers, all the all that. And um, it intrigued the hell out of me, man. You know, the story about Adam and Eve as well, and the angels, and uh, the devil. Like, man, I don't know why that wouldn't intrigue somebody, but, you know, I, I, at some point I became obsessed. I studied the Bible day and night, fighting against mental fatigue, just to absorb everything this book had to offer. I'll be honest, it took me a long time to finish reading it. And because, you know, I, I had a job and I was always working and stuff, eventually that studying slowed down to a near stop, but I was picked back up, you know, before it was too long. Then one day I did finish the book, the Bible. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget that day. It was somewhat anti-climatic, but it moved something in my soul to continue searching. Now, we're going to fast travel a little bit. I was then led into the occult, and don't get it twisted, y'all. The occult means a deeper knowledge, hidden teachings, just things that's not on the surface, or things that's deeper than the surface, than what you can just easily interpret. You have to do, like, some really rigorous studying and outsourcing and many different things involved in that, just to kind of put the pieces of the puzzle together. So, basically, I interpreted this this occult shit as the next stage of fi figuring out what all this shit means, like, even including the Bible. I continually felt like I was guided on this journey, even in this occult stuff, like divinely guided. And it's weird, weird. I will elaborate on this a little bit later. On this journey, I found where the Bible originated from and its deeper meanings, and how these meanings came to be. I listened, read, and learned from what would, what you could call metaphysical masters or teachers. They also helped break down this book and helped me find out its roots, which led me into what I was just talking about before, you know, with the zodiac and um, the signs and how all that shit came up to be. Basically, to sum it all up, at the end of my journey, I'm not going to say the end because the journey's still going, but at a pivotal point where I came to a good conclusion, I think I found what the deeper meaning of it was, and it's very simple. The meaning of Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it. The Father is our higher self. The Son is our lower self or it could be called or interpreted as our fleshly self. And the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is the mediator in between that works in conjunction with that lower self to help us get to our higher self. Now you can easily see that with the story of Jesus and you know him being a sacrifice in order for us to be able to get into a better position with God in a sense that's basically what I can take from it. Once I came into a conclusion on this, I noticed how different the other religions were. And um, they weren't really different, excuse me. They're, they're basically the same, and they have the same meaning. It's just really messed up how segregation plays its part in making this self-discovery harder. And this is really why I kind of want to like help and um, you know, give a perspective on it. As I said in one of my previous videos, I wanted to give a perspective after I figured enough out, which was a long time ago, really. I didn't know how to even start because there's a lot to explain and digest with all of this, hence why I'm starting to talk about myself. Along with our signs and charts, which there are multiple charts, there's something called a life path. As it sounds, a life path basically is your ultimate life goal. And it can be completed, or it could also be failed. The consequences of failing it is unknown in its entirety, because I would believe that you would find out if you failed at a point where it's too late. And of course, that point would be death. But one teacher who I listened to explained that you have only to the age of 35, and don't quote me on that. I believe it was 35. I know the age bracket was in the 30s somewhere but it was a later part of the 30s. 
but you have up to this 30 something age to complete your goal which it hit me hard when I first heard it but one thing I always kept in mind when it came to taking in outside information is that it possible it's possible that the information may be lacking or it just may be, mainly may be the person's interpretation which may be missing something basically don't dwell on everything everything someone says you take the information for yourself research it for yourself meditate on it on yourself and digest it come up with your own conclusion which might change as time goes on and it's alright if it does you just gotta figure that shit out for yourself and it's gonna be different for everybody so getting back to this life path you basically add all the digits in your birthday and reduce them to a single number so one through nine should be the majority of the numbers but there's also things called master numbers I believe the only master numbers are 11, 22, 33, which are double digits. And just to kind of give a little insight onto that, it's all of this is numerology, and every number means something. But when you get a, a double set of numbers, those numbers are multi are they're kind of like combined to give an even stronger power, and that's why they call them master numbers. I believe when you uh, come up with a number that's reduced or a master number, you have your life path number, which gives you more insight into who you are and how you're supposed to move about in life. My life path number is a seven. And when you read and look into a life path seven, it means spiritual completion. And these people are just, they're, they're the odd bunch out. They really are. We don't fit in with people a lot. We might be looked at as weird because um, we just don't abide. We don't follow shit. We really don't. We do our own thing. We don't really fuck with people like that. If we do, y'all should be happy because, like, <laughs> we don't fuck with people like that, man. And there's a good reason because, I mean, it could be interpreted however you want to see it. But the main reason why I don't think we I fuck with people like that is because... A lot of people just are onto things that I ha I think just, I don't know. There's a deeper thing, there's deeper things in life that I think should be, we, we should pay more attention to. Excuse me. Uh, um, seven means spiritual completion. And when I found this out about myself, everything clicked. Even my younger years. The goal of a seven is to learn and to teach. But sevens learn in an introspective way. No, I just told y'all, like, you know, sevens don't really mess with people that much. But we do have a, a desire to, like, basically explain things to people about all our learnings, our endeavors, and things we came across in life to kind of, like, teach and stuff. It's like an, we have an affinity towards it. I'm going to go back to myself a little bit to elaborate on my experience as a 7. And I hope this shit don't throw y'all off because it's kind of simplistic in how I'm going to explain. It's a very small situation. And there's a whole lot of other situations that I'm going to talk about a little bit later in this series. But we finna go deep. In my younger years, as far as I can remember, I had a certain way of learning. Taking things in that I notice now is way different from the average person. I'm not saying I'm a genius at all, but how I process information is very different. Since a young boy, I took information from the outside and processed it on the inside almost immediately. Examples of information can be like how people interact, how physics work, and how life and nature work with each other. All of these examples of information I bring into my inside world and process it inside there. This might sound normal, to some people, but this was a constant thing for me. All avenues of learning that processed inside. I processed the examples, the possibilities, the consequences, and the cause of uh, the cause and effect of damn near everything immediately, right on the spot. My chart explains this 
a little bit different and I wanted to like take a, a excerpt from it so I can sometimes I don't feel like I explain shit properly <laughs> so I'm gonna read it from here it says before I judge an event a person or a thing I attempt to absorb it into my private universe of a fairly subjective and introverted turn of mind I define everything everything in terms of the sensation it arouses in me as my consciousness embraces it this predominance of sensation gives me extreme sensory finesse which is basically like being damn near psychic his perceptions are intense keen penetrating right to the heart of people and things i wanted to take how my natal chart described it because sometimes like i said i feel like i don't explain things good enough but that last paragraph is the best way to sum it all up and what i was trying to say literally everything i have a perspective on from multiple angles that can paint a beauty about the object or person the sensory finesse that the paragraph explained is a god-given gift that i wholeheartedly believe that I noticed at a young age, but didn't understand how to properly utilize it until I became a little bit older. At the point on in life I'm at now, I want to help people look at things how I do. And I'm not saying that everybody should look at things consistently how I do, but it might help, you know? You have to understand without bad, there is no such thing as good. And without good, there is no such thing as bad. Overstanding this gives a sense of power on how you look at it, at whatever it is, and it can give you more power or take away, depending on how you look at it. Understand there is a balance to everything, and it's really divine, y'all. To go even deeper, how you carry yourself in life with the moods we go through will change your immediate surroundings. I don't think y'all really hear me on that, though. It changes your direct personal world on how you control these thoughts, these feelings. Now, y'all can easily see that, like, in social interactions because, you know, what you say and how you move affects people. But there's a science to this. And just to give a quick example, we have what's called neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters eject from your body into your immediate surroundings, bouncing off objects or people or things and directly affect them. These transmitters are said to be able to travel great distances and there's actually a recorded example in science that's actually been tested for a neurotransmitter to travel half the country of America. And they even believe that it's um, it could travel even longer. Does this ring any bells to y'all? It really should because I know a lot of y'all got calls from people from far away when you was thinking about them or vice versa. Or when you're talking to a friend or someone about something that just came into their mind or in, into your mind or they're talking about it. You know, like, how many times do we have to keep passing this shit by saying that this is a coincidence? This shit is not a fucking coincidence, y'all. The year is 2020 and it's time to wake the fuck up for real. I want to give a personal example of what I was trying to say earlier. If y'all been watching my YouTube, you can easily see I have a love for games and playing games. And this love is deep, y'all. It really is. It ain't as strong as it was when I was younger, but like, you see, if y'all been following and y'all been listening to particularly my last video, y'all would understand that this love kind of changed and transgressed into something that I want to like do with it now. But when I was younger, it was more innocent. And I lived in breathed games, I swear. I swear, when it was time for me to get a new game, I knew it was going to happen, like, before it actually happened. It will sound weird to the average mind, but let me throw this in there. At the time I'm explaining about, I was a teenager, maybe preteen, and I didn't have a job or any source of income. Mom and Dad was okay financially, but they didn't have any money to spare for my entertainment purposes, especially when they thought it might have been an issue. <laughs> with games at the time, which I didn't. And let me make it clear, I knew how to balance my time even at that young age, regardless if I spent hours playing the shit. You know, it's way better than doing the shit, you know, like, I don't know. My my youth was, my youth, you know, it, it gradually got a little more hostile as I got older and 
because of the places that I stayed in and lived in. And, um, you know, it kind of, you can see it as a getaway. So, like, I didn't really think it was bad. And my folks, my parents didn't think it was bad. And I definitely made sure to make sure my priorities were taken care of before I dabbled in any of that shit. And that's why my folks never tripped. One day I just woke up knowing I was going to get a new game. I felt that shit in my soul. It's hard to describe, but the feeling is something so prominent, something that I'm so accustomed to feeling even nowadays, that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just something that you can't pass by, man. Something I'm very in tune with. The feeling generates from the heart, which I know now to be electrical magnetic organ, which works in conjunction with the mind. I heard the saying, and it made, made perfect sense. The heart is magnetic, and the mind is electrical, and we live in an electrical magnetic world. This game I got was nothing special. It intrigued me for a little bit, but I got tired of that shit fairly quickly. But ever since that day, that whole experience stuck with me, and I was conscious about it throughout the whole experience. Knowing that, you know, like, I woke up feeling like, hey, this, I feel like I'm going to get game. And then, lo and behold, I got something, which didn't happen often. My friends, pay attention to your thoughts and desires. Overstand how they make you feel, y'all. We had all these wants and curiosities taken away from us at a young age, be it because of school or parents or something that made us act a certain way and suppress certain feelings that deep down your soul needs. Everybody's different, and there's a beauty in that. We're not just flesh and blood. We're very powerful beings, and that goes for all races and colors of people. You have to use the mind to harness and unlock this power through critical thinking, discipline, and keeping this what I call an inside peace. You have to make sure your inside world is like taken care of. And just to throw a little bit more on that, you can't love someone else if you don't love yourself. Just kind of give an example. That's kind of like way out the book, but I don't know, maybe that might resonate with, with y'all. I understand that really heavily. I didn't want to take too much time on this, you know, as this is my first spiritual kind of like talking and teaching that I'm bringing to the public. I want to pace myself with this shit, which reminds me that you have to keep in mind that nowadays it's hard to chase what you love, especially with what's going on in the world nowadays. But if you have something you like to do, like really deep down like to do, I would advise that you look for every opportunity to do it and you finesse on making those opportunities more available as much as you can. Learn about yourself first, find your natal chart, which you can find online and do multiple tests. Try to get an accurate point if you're not so sure on the first one and dwell on that shit, you know? Dwell on that shit, y'all. All right, so I'm gonna cut it off here. Next video, I'll probably talk, uh, we'll go, we'll definitely go a lot more deeper. And, um, y'all give, y'all give me some time because, like, I don't know, like, putting this shit together, like, I try to be, I don't know, this, one part of my trait, and one part of, <laughs> like, my sign and my natal chart is perfectionism. And, like, I swear, I really don't go out my way to try to be perfect or something. But when it comes to certain things, like, making a video... Or putting, a, putting some pieces of work together. I try to do it to the best of my ability. And it might take some time for me to actually put it out. So I apologize about me, you know, taking extra time. Being slow with the videos. You know, I just had a child born and stuff. And I got two other kids. So I got to pace myself. I love y'all. Peace and positivity and respect. Till next time, y'all.